Welcome back. So far, we've covered two of the four points foundational to the gospel that are affected by your belief about the age of the earth. Yes, and they are, number one, originally in the very good world, there was no death. Right. And number two, because of Adam's sin, death entered the world. Now, point three follows directly from point two, and it is there is a connection between sin and death. It should right. be obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a concept that is vital to the gospel is the link between sin and death. Absolutely. You've probably all heard that Jesus died to pay for sin, right? That's pretty I popular. Think most people yep. have heard that. There's a link between sin and death. Yeah. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. There's a link, yeah. And that link was established back in Genesis That's at the very first sin. Yeah, yeah. Now notice the connection here between sin and death. Again, right. very important. Adam sinned and that transitioned the world from very good, no death, right. to the world we have today. Not very good and all <laughs> die. As yep. it says in Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and here it is, yep. and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. Right, and notice it says all men. Of course, this right. is the generic men that includes women as well, just in case you ladies thought you were safe. <laughs> and if anyone's hoping to be saved by being a good person, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Isaiah 64, 6 says, all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. Yeah, and, and that means we're all in trouble, yeah. right? There's 100%. no amount of good that we can do to earn our salvation. Right. So what's the solution? If there's no amount of good you can do to get to heaven, what's the how do we get our sins forgiven? Right. Hebrews 9, 22 says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Now again, notice the connection here between sin and here, it's clearly talking about physical death, isn't it? Right. Physical yeah. death is the payment required for the forgiveness of sins. I mean, we can die to pay for our sins, which would involve being uh, yeah. separated from God's goodness forever and punished for eternity in hell. But fortunately, God provided a substitute so yes. that the price of death could be paid on our behalf by someone else, and we could spend forever with holy God in a sinless, very good world. That's right, yeah, Jesus, who is God himself, is that substitute. Right. Romans 6, 23 says, yes, for the wages of sin is death, but here's the good news, but the free gift of God is eternal right. life in Christ yeah. Jesus our Lord. The bad news is that we all sin and are all destined for eternal punishment. The good news is that Jesus lived a sinless life yes. and died in the place of all those who would believe. Yeah. Believers' sins were transferred to him and his righteous life was transferred to them so that when God the Father looks at the Christian, he sees Christ's sinless life. Mm. We get to heaven not because we're good, but because Christ is good. Our righteousness is from God. Yes, yeah. Philippians 3, 9 says, And be found in him, now, now here it is, not having a righteousness of my own mm. that comes from the law. Right. In other words, not my own good works in following all of God's law, his commandments, that, that right. no one can keep anyways. Yeah. But that which comes through faith in Christ, mm. the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Right. That's how we're saved. Yeah. When we turn to Christ by faith, that means believing that he died for our sins and following him as Lord over our lives. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, yeah, and that's amazingly great. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but it doesn't end there. Right. Having paid for our sins by his death, Jesus then defeated death by rising from the dead. And we can be saved through faith in him alone. Right. Amen. Yeah. And the gospel is good news for everyone. Yes. If you haven't turned to Christ, we plead with you, do that now. Yep. Turn to Christ and be saved. So the final point, point number four, is Jesus dies to pay for sins. We've said what you believe about creation and the age of the earth is not a salvation issue, but it is a gospel issue. It connects to the gospel specifically to the points we just summarized in such a way that if the earth really is millions of years old, the gospel collapses. Yeah. How? <laughs> Good question. Here it is. By adding millions of years into the Bible, it breaks the link between sin and ah. death, which was established back in Genesis. Right. And, and if there's no connection between sin and death, 
then Jesus didn't die didn't to pay for die sins. Die to pay for our sins, yeah. All four of these points come crashing down, yep. you know? How does adding millions of years into Genesis, in other words, adopting the history of evolution, even if you don't believe in evolution, how does the millions of years break the link between sin and death? The Bible's time scale is critical. Yes, it is. The time scale can be deduced from Scripture. It's, it's not real hard to do no. because of the chronogenealogies found in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11, as, as well as other time markers right. laid out in the Old Testament there. We know it's been only about 6,000 years or so since creation yeah. week. Now that means if we are tempted to add in millions or billions of years, they have to go in before right. the end of creation week. Yeah, and that's a great temptation. You know, we get it. The millions of years are all over the place in yes. documentaries, textbooks, yep. movies. It's everywhere. Everywhere. And because it's so popular for Christians, there's a, a little voice suggesting, well, maybe you could uh, fit it in there. Yeah. I don't know how, but maybe. And there's no big deal, right? Good Christians, I know, believe in an old earth. Great men of God in yep. the past uh, thought the earth was old. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a big temptation to yep. cast doubt on the time markers in Scripture. People suggest that, well, maybe the, maybe the creation days aren't literal days, or maybe Genesis 1 is, is poetry. Maybe there was a gap of billions of years just before creation week began. Maybe Genesis 1 is allegory for the Big right. Bang and, and the evolutionary timeline of you know, 13.7, 13.8 billion years, that kind right. of stuff. Right, and we've dealt with all of these, yes, you know, all length. of these suggestions before on this show. They all fail. <laughs> if you're wondering about any of those, just look them up on our website at creation.com or look through previous shows. That's right, yeah. But we'll add the next piece of the puzzle after the break. Many people think that Charles Darwin first thought of the idea of natural selection. However, others prior to Darwin described the concept, although they sometimes used slightly different terminology. For instance, Carl Linnaeus, the creationist father of taxonomy, wrote of a struggle for survival in nature. Similarly, James Hutton wrote about the concept of natural selection. Probably the most influential character was Edward Blythe, an English chemist and zoologist who wrote major articles on natural selection two decades before Darwin published On the Origin of Species. Darwin differed in trying to use the concept of natural selection to promote the idea of unlimited change. However, modern studies of natural selection have revealed that it is limited. It can only select between variations that already exist. It is incapable of producing the new genetic information required for true evolutionary change to occur, such as growing feathers on a reptile. Natural selection is not evolution. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Okay, is the connection between the gospel and the age of the earth getting a bit clearer? Regardless of your views on when God created, recently or millions of years ago, we hope this is helping you build a fuller picture of the details around the issue. Yes, yeah, and you can help others gain clarity about this too. How? By giving this video a like and subscribing and sharing this video on Twitter and Facebook. That's right. The more people who interact with the video in these ways, the more the algorithm suggests it to others. And the more people see it, the more people will be blessed by the content. But we're not done yet. In these last few minutes, we'll bring all the points together and draw conclusions. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, let's add the next piece to the puzzle. Yeah. The long time scale, the millions of years, comes from geology. Right. Those layers of rock that we see in many places around the world were laid down, where we're told, yeah. slowly over eons of time. Yeah, and within those rock layers are dead things. Yes. Dead plants and animals preserved as fossils. But that's not all. There's pain and diseases and extinction yep. and carnivorous activity, violent death. There are even fossil thorns there. Yeah, here's a picture of a fossil thorn that's supposedly millions of years old. Wow. The thorns came after sin, right? And here's a picture of a hadrosaur vertebrae with a T-Rex tooth embedded between two of its vertebrae, and the bone is healed over a little bit. That must mean that the poor hadrosaur lived for some time after the attack, right? Like, likely in terrible pain. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. So could God have called all of this very good? That's the point. Hmm. Remember, that if the fossil record really is a record of the burial of life over eons of time, the only place it could really fit in... Well, it doesn't is, fit anywhere. But. It doesn't fit in anywhere, but, okay, <laughs> the only place where people attempt to fit right. it in yeah. is before Adam sinned. Right, so that places all these terrible things that scientists have found in the fossil record 
along with all the obviously dead things, yes. before sin. Yep. In other words, the baggage that comes with the millions of years history is death before sin. Death is not the result of sin then. Yeah, and in that case, death has nothing to do with sin. There's yeah. no connection between sin and death. And if there's no connection between them, if death is not the result of sin... Then we don't need a Savior. Then we don't need right? a Savior. So that took a while to unpack. But if you work the logic through, yeah. like, like we've done these last 20 minutes or so, the baggage that comes with the millions of years is death, pain, thorns, disease, etc. Right. So by attempting to add millions of years into the Bible, you're really adding death before sin, something that the Bible doesn't support, yeah. and it undermines the gospel. That's right, yeah. And CMI has heard many accounts of people with a church background who became convinced of the millions of years. Yeah. It starts them on a slippery slope away from Christ. Yeah, consider Charles Templeton. He's a famous yeah. example. He Good was example. a Canadian evangelist that at, at one point was more famous than Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. He traveled around the world with, with Billy Graham's team. Here's a picture of him in Fredericton, New Brunswick in the right. 50s. Later in life, he wrote, Farewell to God, My Reasons for Rejecting the Christian Faith. Yeah, sad. And in that book, a big factor at the start of his rejecting Christianity was that he became convinced that the history in the Bible regarding a recent creation was wrong. Yes, yeah, he, he records in his book how he told Billy Graham about it. He said, but Billy, it's simply not possible any longer to believe, for instance, the biblical account of creation. The world wasn't created over a period of days a few thousand years ago. It has evolved over millions of years. It is not a matter of speculation, it's demonstrable fact, he writes. Right, and eventually he would swallow evolution along yeah. with the millions yeah. of years, but it began with millions of years, yes. and that led him away from the gospel. He was taught to just add millions of years into Genesis while taking Old Testament courses at Princeton University. Yeah, that's ironic. In his book, he complains about how God is so cruel, he wrote, why does God's grand design require creatures with teeth designed to crush spines or rend flesh, claws fashioned to seize and tear, venom to paralyze, mouths to suck blood, coils to constrict and smother, even expandable jaws so that prey may be swallowed whole and alive? Nature is, in Tennyson's vivid phrase, red in tooth and claw, and life is a carnival of blood. So he's looking at life today and yeah. seeing these things and then assuming that this has gone on for millions of right. years, including long before Adam, yeah. when the world was supposed to be very good. He, he thought God called all these things very good. Now, right. we understand that these things aren't consistent with what God calls good. But Templeton was wrong about the millions of years. Right. He then concludes, How could a loving and omnipotent God create such horrors as we have been contemplating? The answer is, he didn't. No. God created no, a didn't. world that didn't include things that scientists find in the fossil record. Right, so some of you might be freaking out right now, right? Like, <laughs> if there's no millions of years, then how can we explain things like the layers of rock, the fossil record, and other things oh, no. <laughs> that we're told take a long time? Yeah, and it's it, understanding Noah's flood is the solution. 100%. The flood is the key to making sense of the age of the earth debate right. because a flood would do things very quickly yeah. that without a flood would take. A yeah. long time. Yeah, like erosion, sedimentation, mountain building, uh, continental drift. The flood accelerated all those processes. Yes, yes. So, back to the questions we posed at the start. Right. Do you need to be a young earth creationist to be a Christian? We already said no. no. Does the age of the earth impact gospel doctrines such as how Jesus' physical death paid for sins? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Adding millions of years to the Bible breaks the link between sin and death. Next one, should six-day recent creation be a part of your church's statement of faith? Hmm. Now, that's for your church leaders to decide, yeah. but here's some food for thought. Is the Trinity part of your church's statement of faith? It, ah, it probably is. Interesting, yeah. The age of the earth issue is different than the Trinity. You, you can go your entire Christian life believing that the earth is old and still be saved. Right. They're similar in that denying the Trinity and accepting millions of years are hugely inconsistent with the gospel. But believing the millions of years is not heresy, while believing that Jesus isn't God is definitely heresy. Right. Yeah, okay, so maybe not a direct apples yeah. to apples comparison there. But the point is, in both cases, if someone wanted to join your church and right. they had wrong views in either of those areas, 
the right thing to do would be to sit down with them yep. and help them work through those issues, right. those inconsistencies, so that they have a more solid understanding of the gospel, right? Yeah, like, yeah. sure. And, and that should happen continually as believers yes. fellowship growing together as a normal part of a healthy church. Last question. Is the question about when God created really a hill to die on for Christians? Well, we believe it is. Look yeah, at Charles absolutely. Templeton. He was logically consistent. He was wrong about the age of the earth, but he was consistent. If yeah. there's death, pain, diseases, etc., before sin, it is inconsistent with the nature of God and incompatible with the Bible, and it undermines the gospel. Yeah. The question about when God created really is important. It's very important. We hope that was helpful. Our time is gone. Many more details could be added. If you have any questions about this or anything regarding creation and the flood, just do a search at creation.com. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you next week. And remember, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. And science supports scripture. Thanks for watching. So now can you see how important the age of the earth issue is to Christianity? Yeah, if the earth really is old, as we often hear it is, it seriously undermines the gospel. And if you're leaning toward the earth and the fossil record being millions of years old, but now see the biblical problems with that, you're probably asking where you can find scientific evidence for a young earth. Yeah, a great place to start is creation.com slash age. That will take you to an article with 101 evidences for a young age for the earth and the universe. Enjoy, we'll see you next week.